Hi everyone, my name is Timothy Mitchell and I'm with Mamaki USA. Mamaki has a very cool new product and it's called Trappus. Now Trappus is like a system. It is a system that uses a very special printer with a very unique ink, a unique transfer paper, and then to a unique press to create a remarkable finished product, which is the ability to print not just on natural fibers, but all kinds of different fabrics. This is my friend John Ginsler from LA Print Labs. You know, you're like, what, a fourth generation in the printing business. And you own a Trappist process. Yes. You know, what attracted you to Trappist as a solution to what you do? Well, we did mostly uh, sublimation previously, which works only on polyester. And we had a direct pigment that only worked for cotton. And we wanted to be able to do all the other different types of fabrics. That's what our customers wanted. And previous to Trappist, there would, you'd need a different complicated multi-step setup sure. for each type of fabric. One for nylon, one for rayon. It was slow and expensive, labor intensive, water intensive. So none of those really worked out until with Trappist, it gets rid of a lot of the steps, pre-treatment of post-treatment. Right. Um, and it works on a very wide range of materials, all in the one system. It seems like you've taken decor and gone in every other direction. Like you're doing custom fashion, you're doing visual, you're doing uh, decor, obviously. G give me some examples, because I know you were saying you were doing nylons, you were doing specialty fabrics, you're doing custom prototype clothing. Yes. So the, the Trappist does work, uh, you know, works on, on nylon and the color, and, and it has the color range of a wet print or a direct print and the light fastness. So we were able, we're able to provide that with a fast turnaround and low minimums. Would you say that one of the big advantages of this approach is your turnaround times are quick? Are certainly quicker than ordering overseas and waiting potentially months. The turnaround time is key, and the the minimum amounts are key. A lot okay. of my customers are, you know, they're they're being very responsive to trends. They want to take something from concept to market in 30 days, 45 sure. days, and you're not going to be able to do that by getting something printed overseas. With Trappist, it makes sense. How do you like the color? It's great. It's an eight color system. It's, it's CMYK. It's regular four color process plus additional colors. The color profile of the printer has really been optimized to get all of the ink onto the fabric. When you look at the, at the transfer on the Trappist, there's no ink left on the paper. So you know it's all on the fabric. Plus the, the extra color range provided by the extra colors. It's, it's as good as, okay. as, as direct or wet print. Um, additionally, the, the sharpness of the image, it's not only the color, but it's an additional level of detail that you sometimes can't get with, with previous right. direct. One of the things I've experienced with direct printing is I, I always feel like I'm very limited by the number of fabrics that will work in a direct printing environment because in a direct print, the printer does all the magic and prints to the fabric. And if the fabric isn't prepared properly for a direct print, and a lot of times it's not. Previously, we'd, we'd have to, at a minimum, re-roll the rolls to get them on a, oh. on a good core to feed it. And sometimes even have the, the fabric trimmed because you can't feed yeah, it. So you don't have that problem with the with the Trappist because you can it will just the fabric will fit on the spindle and then Very go nice. through the go through the the press. With direct, you're inevitably gonna have wasted fabric because it's if if any color goes out or there's a clogged head or anything like that, you will have wasted fabric. And that's something that customers don't want to hear. They don't want to hear that that you're you know that there, there's a, a a working wastage of 5%, especially if it's an expensive fabric. And it, it, there's really no way to avoid that, even with extreme babysitting. So with, with Trappist, you know, once, once the paper is good and then it's feeding, it's, you're fine. 
You mentioned speed, and that's something, obviously, production matters. Uh, one of the things I have noticed is the production speed using a transfer Trappist system versus a direct print system. Even with Mamaki's own printers, the Trappist system is faster. It is. Um, it's, I mean, depending on which, which system you're comparing it to, it is, it is faster. You know, I could go down to like a fabric store, you know, Joanne Fabrics or Michael's, and find fabric, and theoretically, there's a good chance this would be able to actually transfer it. The testing we did, we, there, there wasn't anything that it didn't go on. I'm not stocking fabrics. Right. And say, telling the customers, these are the two nylons I have, these are the two cottons I have, this is the two wools I have. My customers bring me their fabric. We actually don't uh, supply any fabrics. We don't stock any fabric. Could you say that again? You don't stock any fabrics. Yeah, we don't. Do you know what a huge advantage that is? It is because if you if you then I, if you're stocking fabrics, either you're limiting your customer's choice. Yep. Most of my customers are already have a fabric that they want to use before they get to printing. Sure. Or they have particular, you know, things about a fabric that they want to use. If I have to stock the fabrics, you end up with a lot of leftover fabrics, a lot of wasted fabrics, a lot of storage sure. space. I do, I know a lot of the suppliers in town. I know where to get different things if they don't know where to get it. Um, and so then that's that, the ability of Trappist to work on such a wide variety of fabrics yeah. and different blends and, and different thicknesses uh, really enables that to uh, give those customers you know, what they want on their fabric. In a previous model, say for nylon or rayon, even just for a sample, for a customer fabric, you would have to coat it, let the coating dry, right. test print it, do the steaming, and, and then you're done. Just right. to see, just for a, just for a sample, you know, with with the Trappist, you don't because because the the coating step is eliminated from by the paper. Correct. You can just run it, run a test, and if you need to adjust it, you can do the adjustment. So I'm going to make a little sidebar on the coating. Yeah. So when you say coating, my recollection is, if you have fabric that has to be specially treated or coated in order to be direct receptive, you either have to buy it that way. Now you have a very limited selection, or you have to do it yourself or you have to send it somewhere. And then that would be like, I gotta pay for shipping, I gotta wait a week, I got a week coming back, and then I have the cost of doing it, and then they might say, look, it's three weeks. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I'm like, it's a month and a half just to get it ready, right. and then the cost of all that. And You've eliminated all right. that completely. And on top, on top of that, the, the wet chemicals for the coating have um, a shelf life ah. also. So you have to keep track of when you mixed it, how long it's been, you know, how long it's been out. So there's a waste there. You need a coating machine, which you get. So that's when, when you're comparing the speed of the Trappist versus the previous direct methods. With Trappist, with the coating being on the paper, you're only using what you need, when you need it. Previous direct methods, besides the, the pre-treatment, and then the, the direct printing, which as I said before, you, you, sometimes not even all the ink gets, goes on the fabric. Right. So that's a big waste. And then you have to steam it afterwards, which is a big water use, a big power use. And then even after that, there's a drying process or if, the, if you have to reframe, reframe the fabric, like there's so many additional steps, gonna replace huge parts of any of, of the previous direct. When you were on your journey to find a direct printing solution, you did find a direct printing solution initially, um, except the direct printing solution that you communicated to me was a little pricey. Yeah, it was it was about 15 times the complete Trappist system, and it it, uh, it had some of the existing drawbacks of other. It, it did print a variety of fabrics. Okay, so you get your variety. We get the variety. But it had some. It shared some of the drawbacks of other current direct systems, sure. where because it's not, the ink isn't going to paper and transferring, the the print heads are exposed to the fibers of the fabric, right. which can shorten the lifespan of the the print heads, 
but it can also clog the print heads mid-print and yep. start getting you misprints. Hey, that fabric didn't work, and now my printer is down for a while. Yeah. I like natural fibers. You know, I prefer natural fibers for tapestries, displays, a lot of things. I just think it, it's a nicer look, it's a better hand. You know, it's a preference. And, you know, you're the person to turn to. The other thing, too, is you can have, um, you can match it across multiple fabrics for the same thing. So if you need, uh, if you need a tablecloth that you want to be something that's more, you know, a woven, that's gonna that's you know gonna yeah. gonna work for that and and, and table backs ah. and then you want some curtains that have some yeah, drape to it. It's a different yeah. fabric. So I'm using six or seven different types of fabrics, fabric. all but with the same custom design. And you're like, hey, I just put them on one roll of paper, right. do them all, right. and we just load the different fabrics into the into the cleaver egg. Yep. How clever? Because yeah, that's a real opportunity there. There seems to be a trend away from polyester in general, toward natural fibers. In, in fashion, in wearables, I'm seeing people looking at like rayon and bamboo and they want cotton yeah. and they don't want, like even in underwear, yeah. like I want cotton underwear. Yeah. I don't want polyester underwear. Yeah. Are you noticed that too? I have, I mean, it's, <clears throat> there's, there's a, lot, a big drive for natural fibers okay. and for cotton and for organic fibers. And there's, there's no such thing as organic <laughs> polyester uh, and that's something that, again, people expect that it can be printed. <clears throat> they don't know the technical aspects of it. Sure. So they, they, when you say you can't, you know, there's, there's disappointment there or whatever. Yeah. And it's, it's a trend. It's a, and it's a trend in, in all, all types of fashion, and in, especially for um, kids' clothing, for okay. bedding. Inflammation really can't print on it. The solution that we're offering with Trappist is also very cost effective. Yeah, it is. And at the cost, it's great for entry level um, position and the, the, especially the, the printer being really affordable right. and, co and comparable to uh, entry level sublimation printer. You can always add another one. Sure. You know, some of these bigger systems, another one is another huge Investment, jump up, yeah. even if you're, even if you have it. Yeah. Even and then if, where am I going to put it? Yeah. Now well, I have the, to buy and, another warehouse. Yeah. The footprint, <laughs> the footprint is another consideration. The Mamaki runs a standard, you know, TS-330 yeah. with very subtle modifications. Yeah. And then I agree with you. I think redundancy is overlooked and very important. Yeah. Let's say a printer goes down. Okay. Well, I have another printer and I can get the jobs out. I might have to work some overtime but the jobs are done. When you have one big expensive printer and it goes down, you're like in a lot of trouble. The calendar press is special because it has extra pressure. Do you use it for standard sublimation also? I don't, but you can. There is still a place for dye sublimation on polyester. Oh, no question. So if you wanted to, to have a press that would work for both, then you could have this one, sure. one press and have a sublimation printer and have the, the Trappist printer, and you'd still be at a really low right. po uh, point of entry. This is a press that was made, for, it could be used for sublimation, and they, it was additional things were, were added. Right. So you could, it, it wasn't that it's stripped of anything. For me, one of the limitations, and I, and I do a lot of dye sublimation, I'm very involved in it, um, one of the limitations is its color fastness versus a pigment-based system is going to have much better color fastness. So let's say we've made two upholstered chairs and the two upholstered chairs, one was done with polyester on dye sublimation and one was done through a trappist and pigment. If those chairs sit in direct sunlight, the trappist is going to last a lot better for color fastness yes. than the sublimation would. Yes, Sub not only for, you know, upholstery, but also for, you know, swimwear and athletic wear, things like that, that are gonna be exposed to, you know, sunlight, heat and everything. Trappist inks are Blue Sign certified, which is a, a third party that certifies the non-toxicity of the inks. They're ma manufactured under humane conditions because if you have a customer that wants to print on certified organic cotton, they probably don't want you using harsh chemicals. California does have the highest standards in the nation as far as that stuff goes, and this obviously meets it. 
the environmental, sustainable, if you will, green uh, messaging around Trappist is significant, yeah. both for its ability to print all kinds of natural fibers, to all of the certifications it meets, to the fact that it's self-contained in one spot. You really don't have the type of waste that you have associated yeah. with a lot yeah. of other large run direct wet printing. Yeah. Often that's all done offshore, yeah. you know, some someplace else. The individual company could be great, but then the, the infrastructure of where that is to get rid of the waste ink doesn't, even, doesn't even exist. Yeah, correct. Even the, like with my dye sublimation paper now, I have someone who takes that and recycles it. So really? Yeah, it gets a second use at, at cutting houses is layering. Okay. Or some might, you know, the, the, or goes to, to packing or it goes to get recycled. Well, I really appreciate your time here this afternoon. Um, I've learned a great deal. I think you're a pioneer. Yeah, I mean, really, you're a fourth generation printer and now you're going like in a completely, like you're literally taking the covered wagon, just driving yeah. out yeah. the wilderness yeah. and saying, I'm gonna do a whole different direction in digital printing. And we, we're so happy to have you as a important client and um, I think a partner yeah. of Mamaki. Well, thank so you. So thank you very, thank you very, much. Thank you very much, John. Yeah.